Wow, Tuesday, July 3rd, 2012. I'm in uh, Hope, New Jersey right now, but I'm seeing that the physicists are nearer to verifying a key clue to the universe. Of course, they're talking about the Higgs boson. What else? What else could they be talking about? U.S. scientists released fresh data bolstering the case for the existence of the Higgs boson. A long-sought particle crucial to scientists' current understanding of how the universe is built. The Higgs boson. The data from the U.S. Department of Energy's Tevatron Collider. Tevatron, that's a non-stick, non-stick collider. Near Chicago isn't enough on its own to confirm the existence of the Higgs particle. However, experimental results to be announced by European physicists on Wednesday will provide a stronger signal of where the Higgs boson is likely to be hiding. The Europeans will tell us where it is because they have spent far more money on their physics and on their colliders than we are spending because we think that going to war is more important. And therefore we spend a trillion here and a trillion there and we don't have a, a big, big collider. The Europeans have it because they don't go to war. At least not yet. Uh, if the Euro doesn't get decided, perhaps that'll be different. But that's why they want to decide it. That's why you Europeans want to get the Euro thing straightened out. Pronto! But that's not the point. Proof that the particle exists would help explain a big puzzle. Why some objects in the universe, such as the quark, a constituent of protons, a constituent of protons, whatever. Why the quark, a constituent of protons, have mass, while other objects, such as photons, the constituent of light, possess only energy. Okay. All right. By extension, the discovery of the Higgs boson would help explain the presence of stars, planets, humans, Republicans, bad movies, the Kardashians, and thus rank as one of the biggest coups for modern-day physics. The officials at the European Particle Physics Laboratory, CERN, meanwhile, are tight-lipped. Whatever is announced on Wednesday will be interesting, said James Gillies, spokesman for the European lab, as to whether or not it might confirm the discovery of the Higgs boson. It's nature who will decide, not us, he added with as much false humility as he could muster. Because nobody knows what the mass of a Higgs boson might be, the particle must be hunted indirectly, typically in giant machines that propel particles to near light speed and then smash them together and generate an array of other subatomic particles. Okay. The search for Higgs received its biggest boost in December when researchers at the Large Hadron Collider, that's the one that the Europeans built, or LHC near Geneva, Switzerland, said that, that data from two independent experiments had narrowed the range of the would-be particles likely mass to between 124 and 126 giga-electron volts. 124 or 126 Giga electron volts, or GeV. Okay. Those experiments were over CERN, overseen by CERN, over CERN by seen. Those experiments were overseen by CERN, which is the uh, uh, what is CERN? Uh, the European Particle Physics Laboratory, CERN, C-E-R-N, the European Particle Physics Laboratory. Those experiments were over, overseen by CERN, over CERN by CERN. Refined data from the Large Hadron collect, Collider collisions released in March put the range of the boson between 122.5 and 127.5 giga electron volts, giga electron volts. And on Monday, data from the 
Tevatron Collider indicated that the Higgs, if it exists, is consistent with a mass of 125 giga electron volts. So that's the, the, the Tevatron is Chicago's contribution to this, even though it's just a little, not nearly as effective or strong as the one in Europe. We're trying to say we contributed something, and I'm sure, I'm sure we did. I'm sure we did. Oh, we have enough to get me excited that I'd be willing to bet your house it's real, but not enough to bet my house it's real. <laughs> Said particle physicist Rob Roser of Fermilab, which oversees the Tevatron Collider in Chicago. So he says, he says, we have enough to get me excited that I'd be willing to bet your house it's real, <laughs> but not my house. <laughs> Based on two experiments, the Fermilab team found that there was only a 1 in 550 chance that the signal was a statistical flute. Flute. Fluke. One chance in 550 that the signal was a statistical fluke, not a flute. Not a flute, a statistical fluke. You know what I mean? I'm not repeating that one. This is why physicists are eagerly awaiting the CERN announcement Wednesday. This time, CERN will base its findings on roughly twice the amount of data available in December. Mm -hmm. Statistically, if you extrapolate from the December data, we're pretty close to discovery significance, explained John Ellis, professor of theoretical physics at King's College London and a guest professor at CERN. Higgs has no place to hide. Higgs has no place. To, it's got to be there. Something's got to be there. And they named it Higgs. Dr. Ellis says he hasn't seen the data from the latest round of experiments at the Large Hadron Collector. This LHC, the, the, uh, the Large Hadron Collider. Large Hadron Collider. Now, everybody knows that that's the big one in this world, yet it doesn't exist till halfway down in the article because they don't want to annoy American scientists by saying that our uh, research is really secondary to the Large Hadron Collider, which, of course, the Europeans built because they had more money and they didn't go to war and they didn't spend their money on things and they pay a lot of higher taxes than we do, and they had the money to build it. It's not important. We just give up our position as being the number one science country in the world. Ah, no big deal. No big deal. Yeah. Even if scientists at CERN were able to pinpoint where the Higgs is lurking, the find might not be enough to claim a formal discovery yet. Yeah, you say where it's lurking, but you don't find it. You didn't discover it. It's like uh, hide and go seek, you know. You can't just say, well, there's no better, it can't be anywhere else but behind that tree, therefore I've got you. No, you don't. You've got to go back and get him. You're it. All the alien free, all that. You can't just say, well, you've got to be behind the garage because uh, I looked everywhere else and you weren't there, therefore I found you. No. That's the same with the Higgs boson. They know where it has to be, but if they don't find it, does it count? I don't think so. Not in my book. Physicists would need to verify some perceived properties ascribed to Higgs, the idea that it has no spin, for example. It has no spin. It's like a knuckleball going through space. It seems making you go, ooh, ooh, ooh. Maybe that's why they can't see it, because it's a knuckleball. It gets, uh, that's it, the Higgs boson knuckleball. It has no spin. I don't know. Dr. Ellis expects Wednesday's announcement to be significant. His conjecture is based on, quote, what everyone is saying in the corridors at CERN, that's the European Particle Physics Laboratory. The people who did the experiments seem to be quite happy. Quite happy. Well, I hope so. We'll report in Wednesday with what they found. Today's, uh, today's Tuesday. It's tomorrow. So it'll be like in Thursday's paper. Can you wait? I can't. I can't.